Greetings, fellow Earthlings, and welcome to a building with a giant F on it. That huge F stands for Farrah. And if you're not sure what that means, that beautiful Lamborghini spider out front there might give you an idea of what's in this building. Uh, this building belongs to Matt Farrah of Smoking Tire fame. This is Westside Collector Car Storage, and Matt has been kind enough to let us have a run around in there today and show you guys what it's all about. Let's have a look. Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome to the Cathedral Room. Look at this place. If I couldn't be excited enough already, Matt Farrah is here. Matt, How you doing, man? Thanks thank for coming you. by. Thank you so much for Oh, my pleasure. Us. Thanks for checking out my spot. This place is amazing. I can't wait to have a look around. It's pretty wild, isn't it? This is uh, It's one of a kind for sure, especially uh, in Los Angeles. My gosh, especially. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like having a child in a toy box, quite honestly. I know. It's like a Hot Wheels set, but in real life, like full size. Showing us around? Yeah, let's go for a tour. Come on. So, so basically, uh, you know, West Side Collector Car Storage has a few different areas, right? The main room, the big splashy thing that's all over the website is this room, the cathedral room. We have 18 Park Plus QP1000 stackers, right? They can each hold four cars. Uh, the limit for each of the trays is, uh, is 6,000 pounds, 17 feet long, seven feet high. So you can see uh, we've got some bigger cars and some smaller cars. We've got a Macan. The Tesla Model X in the back corner is probably our biggest, heaviest car, but we've had G-Wagons and Bentley Bentegas and stuff like that. But for the most part, you know, sports cars, old and new. Uh, we've got a big variety of cars in this room. Uh, being Los Angeles, we're obviously overrepresented with Porsches. Uh, about 25% of the cars that we have in storage here are Porsches of some kind. Um, We've got a bunch of GT cars as well as a bunch of air-cooled cars. Uh, behind that, classic Mercedes, classic BMW, uh, and then a variety of muscle cars. Um, so there's all, all different kinds of stuff that people store for all different kinds of reasons. Um, to get cars out, you know, to get cars off the top trays, you do have to move the cars out from underneath them, which because we have a staff, it's not that big a deal. It only takes about maybe 10 minutes to get a car off the top tray. Um, and, and we've got battery tending systems that go all the way up, so the cars that are on top, they're getting a batteries charged the whole time, right? So basically, the way we organize this room is, uh, the cars that live on the floor uh, are most likely to go out. The customers are most likely to call and say, I'd like to come drive my car and, and, and take it out. And then the higher up you go up the lift, are cars that are in longer and longer term storage. By the time you get to the very top trays, you've got cars that literally don't go out ever. So you see there's a Danica Patrick NASCAR up there. That Aston Martin doesn't even actually run. Uh, the red Shelby up top is a zero mile brand new delivery car that someone's just trying to bubble wrap indefinitely. And those are vehicles that, that never go out. And then we also have uh, on this side up top, there's a Lotus where the, the owner lives in a different country. These BMWs, the owner actually lives in New Zealand. And so we have plenty of notice if any of these folks want to come and take their cars out, right? The stuff on the floor is typically locals. They live in the area and they use their cars a lot. Uh, these Porsches, this muscle car, um, uh, Chevelle here, um, you know, Aston Martin right there. These cars go in and out a lot, you know, at least more than once a week. Um, and so they are, they're always kept pretty close up front for easy access. Uh, over here, Russell and Jake are working on a McLaren 570S for one of our clients. That's our wash and detail bay. Uh, we're one of the only facilities in Southern California with an indoor permitted, fully legal wash and detail bay. We have to recycle all of our water and it's, there's a lot of regulations um, you know, governing that, but it's something that we can do exclusively for our customers. We're not open to the public as a detail shop. You have to be in storage here to do that. Um, the lifts themselves are actually unique. You may have seen them in uh, places like New York City, uh, by the Javits Center or in the, in the village. They run these units outdoors. Uh, these are, this is the most ever put indoors anywhere in one room. Also, this is the first time they've ever been installed over a basement. We have a 40 car underground level below this. So 
if you think about us being in a seismic zone, uh, dealing with earthquakes, we have special concrete, and then the lifts are actually sitting on one inch steel plates sunken into the concrete. And then these uh, nine uh, bolts here are not just bolts, they're 18 inches long, and there's a mirroring steel plate in the concrete with a double rebar grid, number 18 rebar. So that gives us resistance to a theoretical 12.0 earthquake. Uh, the walls of the building are also one foot thick CMU block filled with rebar and concrete. So this is the strongest building you'll ever see in your entire life. We had to have a special mixture of concrete made just to be the appropriate density to hold this amount of weight over an open deck basement. No one's ever done that before. Uh, the lifts are also special. They're called a QP1000H, H is for heavy duty. They make two versions of this lift, Los Angeles County and everywhere else in the world. So the, these lifts to install them in Los Angeles County is approximately three times the cost per unit to put them anywhere else in the world because the steel is extra thick. It's a special LA certified steel. They also have to be assembled by LA certified welders. So that adds tremendously to the cost. Um, down here you can see these are the motors that run them. Uh, we've got three 20 horsepower hydraulic motors, one here, one in that corner, and another one over there. Each of these motors runs six lifts. So uh, we've got the, the plumbing, the hydraulic plumbing goes either around the walls or actually through the floor itself. You can't just buy these lifts and put them down. You actually have to build a complete building around them that is designed just for them. So if anyone's like, hey, I got tall ceilings, I'm just gonna put these lifts in. You can't, you have to have the whole building uh, built around them. Um, I'll show you how they work. So the trays, this is actually our top tray here and you can see the trays nest into each other. So if we wanna go up, they move in unison. They go pretty quick. And then it picks up the next tray. And up we go. And then we drop them on the lock, take our keys with us. So that's how they work. Um, and you know, they're very fun, they're very cool. They're also extremely dangerous, so you have to use a lot of caution. <laughs> there's not, there's like locks, but there's not a lot of uh, idiot proofing. You actually have to have a well-trained uh, staff. Um, let me, let's, uh, let's go take a look downstairs. In our lobby, um, it's a lobby. It's clean, it's tidy. It, I think, uh, shows you what it's, you know, what's important about us when you come in here. It's inviting, it's well lit, it's very clean, um, but you kind of know what you're getting into. And, uh, and I really like that. I've got Honda CX500 motorcycle I parked under the stairs. I bought it because it says turbo on it in six different places. First ever factory turbocharged motorcycle. Who is the stud on That's the me and my first car. Right there. So you've got Smash Mouth, Greenwich, Connecticut, and then Corn down the here. Mouth. Yeah. I was very confused, boy. What color is that? Can you guess? I'd say some sort of an import. It's a Subaru Legacy. So down here, we have a, our 40 car underground level, uh, which is accessed by the ramp back over here. I'm very proud of my ramp. Um, one of the main design uh, features of our building is that unlike the rest of Los Angeles, it is impossible to scrape the underside of a car here. LA has a real problem with, because we don't have uh, sewers, the roads are all crowned and with the driveways, right, to drain water. What happens is you scrape the undersides of your car getting into these funky driveways. It's really annoying. So here we've benchmarked the uh, Corvette ZR1 so it is actually impossible 
to scrape a car here. It also drains beautifully if it ever rains. And so these are our assigned spaces. Uh, upstairs, the spaces are unassigned. We arrange the cars as we see uh, fit uh, for convenience. Down here, these are assigned. So each column is one owner. So these are our assigned triples, and then we have our assigned tandems. Uh, we also do motorcycle storage, but for the customers who don't want their cars, you know, moved ever, they don't, they don't like the idea of having to shuffle their car out of the way for someone else's car, the, uh, the assigned spots work for them. We've also got 14,000 cubic feet per minute uh, exhaust setup down here, so we can run four cars at a time uh, on the underground. We, uh, as part of our service, we uh, start up and warm up all the cars that don't get used once a month. We warm them off the temperature. We also shuffle them around a little bit so they don't get flat spots on their tires. And so we do that down here. So we have, to, we have as you can see right here, CO2 monitoring. So we don't have to do anything with the fans. Um, you know, when, it, when the CO2 goes up from running cars, the fans kick on, very simple. Um, we've got EV charger over there. We have two EV chargers on site, one outside in the front driveway and one down here. And, you know, just like upstairs, variety of cars, right? Uh, these are our employees' cars besides those, but lots of Porsche. Um, some things where you look at them and you go, I don't understand why that's here. Uh, other, <laughs> other things where it's, uh, it's pretty obvious why they're here. Um, but one thing that's very interesting about our business in general is that you can have cars that are worth $200,000 and cars that are worth $10,000 and people will pay the same amount to store them and be equally happy with the service. You know, because we're a service oriented business and because money and a financial investment is not always why people keep a car. Maybe it was their parents' car and they left it to them. Maybe it was a car they had in high school. Maybe it was anything, you know, any, any reason. Maybe they, they just like it, but they don't have room at their house, but they do have the money. You know, their, their bank account and their financial status doesn't always, isn't always reflected on the surface with the value of the car. So there are very few cars from a strict financial investment where it's worth it to spend $700 a month to park them. But, you know, we're a concierge service. So when you consider the fact that we've got the detail shop and we handle all the stuff and we do the battery tending and we keep the cars alive and clean and, and, and you've got someone like me keeping the attention to detail, uh, they find it that, that our service is valuable, uh, even if it is expensive. Come on upstairs, I'll show you the lounge and the uh, podcast studio. Hold on, what's the dog doing? Oh yeah, subscribe now. Delta says thank you. So up here, uh, if we go to the, around to the left, video cameras incoming. This is our members lounge. Where, where my family happens to be hanging out because it's a Sunday. Mid-century vibe. Uh, wine and whiskey lockers for the members. We can't serve alcohol here, but you could certainly keep your own. Cigar deck outside. You've got a good view into the comings and goings of the, uh, of the place. These windows are, along with this entire wall, are two hour fire rated. That's what this orange sticker means. It means that uh, you could have an enormous fire in there and be totally safe in here for a really long time. My friend Misha's guitar. I hear you're a, friend, a fan of Misha's work. So that was, that's one of his stage used guitars he gave me. I've played it twice. <laughs> it looks good on the wall though. Sure and uh, down this way. You've got the Smoke and Tire podcast studio. Um, so it looks better when I turn the actual studio lights on. Here, I'll make that happen. Blue lights, blue lights. Yeah, and then you gotta turn the fluorescence off. So now you have actual studio lighting in here. Uh, my brother-in-law, John, has a company called Kirai Design out of San Diego. They make all this acoustic paneling. Um, it's made out of recycled water bottles, so it's very eco-friendly. 
comes in all different colors and stuff. And so we had him do the, uh, the Porsche gauge cluster over here, the Ferrari uh, H pattern shifter, and then as well as some standard tiles. But when you close the door, it really, it really knocks the sound down. It's really, really good. So we, we, we would podcast for 10 years out of a very terrible place. And so the, this, this is our reward for doing good work is we get to do radio in a, in a really nice room now. And so you get to look in at the cars and um, have a nice, beautiful, beautiful table and good mics and, and really good lighting. Did Joe Rogan help you with the setup? I mean, I, you know, I asked Jamie what chairs they use and what mics and what mic arms they use. So I suppose I did get some advice from them, but <laughs> they have very big and clunky video cameras and we use iPhone uh, 11s, which actually work better. Yeah, no, it's all connected wirelessly to an iPad. Um, so we can do, you know, switching and, and all that stuff just through, through Apple devices, which is a, a very neat system. It's called SwitcherCast and it works really, really well. Yeah. Next door is my office, which is a complete disaster right now because I just got back from a long road trip. So this is where I spend a lot of my time. Um, I get a great, great view. I get to look out over the, uh, the happenings and you can see things from all different parts of my life on the wall. Um, I've got a lot of boxes and things because I've been gone for two weeks. So I've been, so I've, I've come, uh, I've come back to a lot of mail. Um, but you know, this is, uh, you know, got kind of a mid century meets old school Hollywood vibe. And I was a fine arts major. So, uh, in college. So one of the only things I'm actually trained to do is hang a gallery. Uh, so, so I actually was able to, to do all, all the framing and stuff, uh, freehand. No rule, no rulers required. Alcatraz picture? Uh, not Alcatraz. That's Eastern State Penitentiary oh. in Philadelphia. It's a prison that's uh, shut down. That was Al Capone's jail cell, which they left as it was. And uh, I shot that on an 8x10 camera, which is an old school film camera, like Ansel Adams kind of style. Um, I was a photography major in college, and so uh, my senior thesis was about loneliness, so I juxtaposed very beautiful desert landscapes with abandoned prisons. So, I was a happy kid. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then just, you know, family, random, random car things, and a bunch of stuff. So that's the shop. That's it. That's the, my Lamborghini up there by Larry Chen. Uh, I'm sorry that my, my red car is not here. It's in service right now, but so it goes. And uh, that's West Side Collector Car Storage, at least location one. We've just bought a second building uh, by the Hawthorne Airport in Gardena for location two. Uh, we've just begun renovations, so we'll, we should be open in a year, year and change. And, um, you know, we look forward to expanding. So that's the garage. One question from a subscriber. Sure. What is the best road to drive in Los Angeles at night? Uh, well, I certainly wouldn't say it publicly, but I'll tell you later. Oh, all right. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> all right, cool. Wink, wink. Thank you very much, Matt. Yeah. Really appreciate Thanks for coming. Time. Happy to have you. Thank you. See you later. Okay, Fogadoodles, pop quiz. Ignore the cars with the covers, but how many Porsches do you see? I happen to know that that light yellow 911T belongs to photographer and film director Jeff Zwart. So how many Porsches did you see? There was one, two, three, four, five, six Porsches. Ah, ah, ah. As we pan across the evil-looking Lamborghini Aventador Roadster, and the sweet-looking Porsche 993, we come to a pair of quad lifts with another 993 and a 996 hanging out with an Audi TT. These gantries are to fulfill local fire department rules, allowing firefighters safer access to the upper levels. This final set of quad lifts are three across and two deep, adding 24 more lifts for a total of 72 lifts in the cathedral room. As Matt mentioned, facility members can have their cars detailed here, but not just any detailing. All the products and training come from Larry Casilla of Ammo NYC. Check out Larry's YouTube channel if you want to really know how to detail a supercar. 
Do any of you have as much trouble as I do telling the difference between McLarens? Seeing as we have some examples here, I'll share my personal cheat sheet with you. It turns out McLarens come in three flavors. The ones with the more normal looking lights are the entry level sport series, starting at around $185,000 or Porsche Turbo territory. The ones with the split headlights are from McLaren's mid-range Super Series, starting at around $300,000. McLaren's top-of-the-range vehicles are its Ultimate Series and include million-dollar-plus cars like the Senna, Speedtail and P1. Just to add to the confusion, the McLaren P1 kinda has sport headlights and the Senna has Super Series-style headlights. This McLaren 720S has 720 PS, or Fehrstarker, <laughs> German for horse strength. PS is the metric equivalent of horsepower. Singer-songwriter Post Malone had a white 720S that he sang about in the song Wow. Next door to the 720S is another Super Series McLaren, this time with 765 Fehrstarker. <laughs> the LT refers to long tail, or specifically a longer rear wing, that rear wing. Any Tavares fans will know these cars inside and out as Tavares just finished rebuilding a mortally wounded 675 LT as an homage to the mighty McLaren F1. Next in the McLarens and helping combat our pesky bug problem is this well-enjoyed Porsche 991 GT3. Hit the notification bell, it's up there. Yes, please. Hiding in the back row chewing gum is this Ferrari 458 Speciale. The 458 Speciale is made special by the magic combination of more power and less weight, with of course the required sprinkling of carbon fiber and vents. That sprinkling includes the exact same carbon ceramic brakes as the Ferrari La Ferrari. And that was so good, they named it twice. This pearl white Lamborghini Aventador Roadster is one of the flagship Lamborghini models, meaning that it has a V12 engine and the distinctive scissor doors and a base price of $460,000. This Roadster version has two removable roof panels that can be stored in the frunk. These insect wing glass inspection panels over the engine bay are a stunning way of allowing the heat to dissipate while at least keeping some of the rain out, though I doubt this car gets driven too much in the rain. Pininfarina. That name immediately makes car people perk up. It was designer Batista Farina's childhood nickname. Believe it or not, it loosely translates to little wheat in Italian. This 1986 Ferrari 328 GTS is one of Matt Farah's personal cars. As the name suggests, this 328 has a 3.2-litre V8 engine, producing 280 screaming horses of Ferrari flat-plane awesomeness. Sadly, none of that matters, as the brake master cylinder is currently broken. Below Matt's Ferrari is a very clean Chevrolet Chevelle. The grille makes it look like a 1966. However, I don't think that hood or those headlights are stock, plus all the chrome is gone. I would guess that this car has been taken apart and put back together again. I wonder what's under the hood that needs so much space. Pista means track in Italian. This Ferrari 488 Pista is the fancy pants version of the regular 488. Like its predecessor, the 458 Speciale that we just looked at, the Pista has less weight and more power than the standard model. This shape reminds me of something. What do you think? Are Corvettes looking more like Ferraris, or are Ferraris looking more like Corvettes? Wide body? Anybody? If you spent the early 90s breaking legs for the Mafia, I imagine this 1989 Mercedes 560 SEC AMG with its 6 litre V8 may well have been your company car. Most of the cars residing at Westside Collector Car Storage are using Optima Digital 400 battery maintainers like this dark red Porsche G-Series Targa. The Targa name was chosen due to Porsche's dominance of the Targa Florio road race in Sicily. That G-Series has a twin, 
Next to this modern dark red Targa, you can see the extendable power cables that allow all the cars to remain on a battery maintainer. You also get a good view of the built-in fire suppression system for each stack of cars. This 992 Targa looks like it has every option known to humankind. They're even running out of space to fit all the gold words. My knowledge of old American cars is pretty shaky, but this rat rod is very interesting to me. The grille kind of looks like a Mercedes Silver Arrow race car, and the body kind of looks like a 1930s Ford, like a Model A or something, maybe? Don't quote me on that. When I first saw this car, I thought it was a non-running project, but the more I look at it, I think it might actually be ready to rock. Matt has these fun Max Headroom style talking heads all over the place, telling you about the many cool things there are to see. This one is telling us about the pro graffiti bathrooms courtesy of blank cassette wallpaper. I know Matt is a fan of Back to the Future, as am I, and so this is what my mixtape is going to be. Let's talk for a moment about one of the cars that's sadly not here, Matt's 1988 Lamborghini Countach QV. It's the same car used in the music video for Something Human by Muse. It's also the same car that was brutally attacked by supermodel Cindy Crawford, and thanks to X17 Online, we do now know that Cindy was actually standing barefoot on two apple boxes and a folding table. Thank crikey. So that's Westside Collector Car Storage. Definitely the safest, most convenient and coolest way to store your car. Matt mentioned that it's $700 a month to store your car here. So I don't know if that sounds like a lot to you, but I called around in Southern California within 20 miles of this location and you cannot rent anything, even just a basic garage with a padlock, for less than $780. And really, that just makes Westside Collector Car Storage a bargain. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Matt said that the best road in Los Angeles to drive for fun is the...